H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so we'll get started. As usual, like if you have any questions, uh, you can ask me in the chat window. So my voice will not be uh, clear like how it's before I uh, have a little cold today. So, okay. So we'll get started. So uh, tomorrow uh, in the next class, um, I mean, whenever we have next class, I'm going to ask questions to all of you on the topics what, I, what we have discussed so far. So I'll be asking questions on data types, operators, uh, and we'll be seeing exception handling. So all the concepts, whatever we have discussed so far, I'm going to ask questions and uh, uh, and we'll also have uh, uh, exam like how we had uh, before on the topics which we discussed. Okay. Now let's get started for today, today's class. So let me open the course content. And okay. So today we are going to discuss on um, um, object-oriented programming concepts. So anything which is there uh, pending in this section, we'll come back to this section again. And we are going to start object-oriented programming concepts. So very important concept. So, so this will be the target for in interviews. So anyone uh, who 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 says like they are they are good in C sharp, definitely uh, for sure questions are in object-oriented programming concepts. So we are going to learn today uh, what is a class, what is an object, and what are the access modifiers. So we'll see how it goes. Okay. So let me open Visual Studio. Uh, Visual Studio I'm using 2013. Very important concepts, object oriented programming concepts in C sharp. So, it's taking time. Okay. So now, um, okay, file. Okay, it's still taking time. Okay. okay. File new project. So I'm going to I'm going to create a new console application. So for those um, who just joined, like I'm going to create a new console application. File new project in Visual Studio. I'm going to select File new project, and I'm going to select a console application. And now, if you see uh, the the name of the console application is console application 52. So let me click on OK. Okay, so it's creating project for me. I don't know today Visual Studio also a bit slow. Um, okay. Okay. So now, uh, as we already discussed, like a class, a class is um, you can tell like uh, a collection of methods and variables. This is one definition of class. So I repeat again, a class is a collection of methods and variables. So we'll see other definitions of class as well. So a class is like a blueprint to create objects. So we'll see that. We'll try to understand the definitions for a class. For now, you can assume that a class is a collection of methods and variables. I repeat again. A class is a collection of methods and variables. And a namespace which we have here, a namespace which you have here is, is a collection of classes. A namespace is a collection of classes or it can be the collection of namespaces as well. So here, this is a class program by default it's getting created so now now let's try to let's try to create another class for example i want to create my own class here so i'm going to create a class class math library 
Okay, I, I am just creating a new class which is math library. The name of the class is math library, and I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have a method inside that for adding two numbers. So so public. So I'll tell what is public. I'm going to write int, and here I'm writing add numbers. So for adding two numbers, I need the parameter. I need two values. So int a comma int b. So now now if I add this, so here I'm going to return return a plus b. So all I did was I'm adding a new class. For the first time you're seeing code like this. I'm going to add a new class inside this namespace console application. So now you're seeing two classes. One class is program and the other class is math library. And in console application, the execution of program starts at main method. Okay, the execution of the C sharp program starts at main method, and inside main method we don't have anything as of now. So now, if I want to, if I want to add numbers, till now how we are doing to add two numbers? Uh, forget about this class math library. So let me let me comment it out. Okay, so I have just commented. Till now, in the course, if you want to add two numbers, we used to like this. So int a comma b, and we used to write a is equal to uh, here. We'll write console dot write line, and we'll write here enter enter first number. Okay, and then here we'll write a is equal to a is equal to uh, what do we need to write? Console dot read line, and before that, we will write here convert dot to int. So because because console dot read line is a string and convert dot to int thirty two. So we are converting that string to integer. Okay. Now now I'm going to read for the second number. Enter second number. So I'm going to copy this again and I'm going to paste it here. And here enter second number and I'm going to read that value to variable b. So now, if I want to add these two numbers, I used to write here. Uh, I used to write another variable, uh, or let me take like this, uh, comma c, and we will write here c is equal to a plus b, and we'll write here console dot write line. We'll write sum of sum of, and here we'll write flower bracket zero and flower brackets one equal to flower brackets two, and after this we are going to write a comma b comma c. Okay, so this is how we used to do. How many of you are not clear in this? Uh, uh, so we know all. We know this, right? How to read a number and uh, this is a read line, and we are converting to integer, and we are storing in a variable a, and we are storing it in variable b. And how many of you don't know this? Uh, giving like this flower brackets. Uh, other than for those who joined today, uh, anyone else don't know this? Flower bracket zero, one, and two. Uh, so this value, whatever you see here, will be printed. A value will be printed in flower bracket zero. And B value will be printed in flower brackets one, and C value, which is here, will be printed in instead of this place. So now let me run this. Let me run this program. Okay. So enter first number. I'm going to enter the first number as five. Enter second number. I'm going to enter this ten. So so what do I need to do? I'm not able to see the output. So what is that I need to do? The output is coming and it's getting it's it's getting disappeared. So what is that I need to do? I need to write I need to add console dot read line. Perfect. So console dot read line. Okay. Now let me execute this. So now let me let me give the first number enter first number five and enter second number ten. So now I can see that sum of five and ten is fifteen. So so here this is what I'm talking about in this zero place in this flower bracket zero place whatever you you put here after the comma first one that is going to be printed here so i have entered here 5 and you can see that sum of here it is coming 5 so which is actually a sum of 5 and 10 is equal to 15 so sum of 5 and 10 is equal to 15 so this is about the simple program which i used to do before now let's try to do using a new class so let's try to create let's try to create a new class so i'm going to create a new class called math library so if you see here, we will we are going to create a new class math library inside this namespace. So all of you know already that a namespace is collection of one or more classes, or a namespace can also have another namespace inside that. So now what I'm doing, I'm going to create uh, I'm going to create a, a a class called math library. Okay. Now now what I'm going to do I'm so I have 
to access this method math add numbers i have to i have to create an object of this math library so let's see how to create an object of math library so so what i'll do now i um, i'll create an object here so i'll create an object for math library so we need to create like this math library ml is equal to new math library and here i just created an object so now this ml is an object for math library okay so if i want to access methods uh, if i want to access public methods of a class i need to give ml dot add numbers so what i need to write here is instead of giving a plus b i'll call this method uh, this add numbers method so how to call that i need to give ml dot add numbers and i need to pass here a comma b so so the 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 purpose of this creating separate classes wherever you want you can actually reuse this uh, reuse these methods so assume that if you are writing logic here for example let's try to create let's try to add a function for calculating factorial of a number so for that you you already know how to calculate factorial so let's try to write that method public int factorial and uh, and int n and here anyone wants to help me uh, in this writing this code factorial who wants to help me you can unmute and tell me the logic so anyone wants to help me with the factorial logic or tell me have we done factorial program before Yes. Yeah. So, who wants to help me? Uh, we have to we have to declare a variable uh, fact equal to one. Perfect. In, in fact equal to one. one. Okay. Comma i. Okay. And uh, uh, we are taking loop for loop. Yeah. Perfect. So we need to write a for loop for i is equal to one and i less than or equal to n i plus plus and here we are going to write fact is equal to fact star i okay so thank you Sima thank you very much so here what I need to do I need to return the factorial so I'll explain this program for you don't worry if you're not getting so factorial of a number is the product of the numbers from 1 to n so now now if you see here I declared a, I declared a variable fact equal to 1 and I declared a variable i now I have written a for loop for i is equal to 1 i less than or equal to n n is the one which we are passing for this method for example if you pass the value 4 this this for loop will iterate from 1 to 4 so every time which it iterates we have initialized fact value to 1 so 1 into 1 that will be stored in fact and i value becomes 2 already fact value is 1 so 1 into 2 that will become 2 and fact value is 2 now i value becomes 3 fact value is 2 2 star 3 that will become 6 fact value is 6 now when I, I value becomes 4 already fact value is 6 so 6 star 4 that is 24 so 24 is returned to the place wherever we call this factorial now now the use of creating this class is class and inside this two methods is wherever you want to reuse this functionality you can simply create create the object for this class math library and you can call those methods for example if i want to find factorial of number a whatever whatever i'm reading here i can simply write here um, int fact uh, int result result is equal to ml dot factorial i can write here yay so this result will be populated with the factorial value that is calculated so that is the advantage of using a class so a class using a class you can add any number of methods you want you can add add numbers factorial or any number of methods and if you want to reuse them wherever you want you can simply write create an object of that and and you can you can actually do this you can actually call those methods using object object dot method name object dot method name okay so now the other definition of a class which we have is a class is like a blueprint to create objects so a class is the one which is having functionality for example uh, for example let's uh, let's remove this so we'll have another method called for example i have a class called class student 
Okay, and now here I have only one variable public string student name. Okay, so now I have I have a class and I have only one variable public string student name. Now, how to access this student name? I need to create an object for this student. So, how to create an object? So, I need to go to this program and, and here we need to create an object like this student s1 is equal to new student and actually I can assign the value for this variable I can assign the value for this variable student name using object so I can assign like this s1 dot s1 dot student name is equal to Raj or if I want to assign some other name I need to create I want to store names of three students if I want to store names of three students I need to create three objects if I don't create three objects, if I put s1 dot student name and if I try to assign another name called make, this will overwrite the previous value Raj. Okay, so if I want to store three students details, I want to write, I want to write create another object. So I need to write uh, student s2 is equal to new student and here I am going to write s2 dot, uh, s2 dot student name is equal to make nada. Okay, so so we saw two types of class, two types of classes. One class is math library, which is having methods, and the other class student, which is having only variables. So a class can have variables, a class can have methods, a class can have both variables and methods. Now, if you see here, objects will be uh, of different size. So, for example, if you see the object s1, that's very small, very small data we have. And if you see the object s2, yes we have we have little big data. So if you have if you have a paragraph, like for example, if if someone's name is too big, uh, then 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 they will have the data is very big. So now, for example, let me open Windows or MS Paint. Okay. So now, if why do we call the class as a blueprint? Is for example here, if I am if I if 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 you want to construct a house. If you want to construct a house, you normally go to a civil engineer and he will he will give you the design design. So that we call it as blueprint. So now in that let's take that you have uh, you have a house called like this. So let's assume that in, in that design document or blueprint you have a house like this. So let's assume that this is a small house. So using this, so using this design document you can actually construct a very big house. Uh, so you can actually this is a model so this we call it as model or a blueprint or a design so now you can actually create a small toy tie hose with the same design so maybe maybe you can create a small tie hose or you can actually create a very big house say for example like this okay so that's what so so what I mean to say here is objects can vary in this size so objects uh, so a class this is a class and this is this is object one so this is like s1 and this is like s2 so so object size can vary but whereas class is like a blueprint to create objects and this object s1 is an instance of this class this object s2 is an again instance of this class so i repeat again a class is like a blueprint to create objects so the structure of all the objects will be same like how you have how you defined in the class and and what is an object an object is an instance of a class so if you see s1 s1 is an instance of this class it looks same functionality like how you have your class and s2 is another instance of a class so now if someone asks you to define a class i'll define like this the first definition which we saw is a class is a collection of methods and variables and the second definition which, which we are seeing now is a class is a blueprint to create objects. A class is blueprint to create objects. Now what is an object? An object is an instance of a class. For example if you see here this object S1 is an instance of this class and which is having small data called Raj and this object S2 is again instance of the student and this is having bit lengthy data. So now, can someone tell me the two definitions uh, of a class? Who wants to tell me the two definitions of a class? 
can one of you can unmute and tell me the two definitions which we discussed now for a class yeah so sanjay you can unmute yourself and you can tell for all of us i i'll tell once maybe you can you can explain later so i am repeating again a class is a class is like a blueprint to create objects to create to create objects and the second definition a class is collection of collection of methods and variables and what is an object an object is an instance of a class so anyone else wants to explain these definitions who wants to tell okay bavik go ahead bavik you can unmute and explain this to others Okay. First, Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. First, go ahead with the two definitions for class. So, a class is a, a blueprint uh, to create an object. Perfect. And the other one is a class is a uh, a class class is a. Yeah. So, w what is that? Collection of method and variables. Perfect. Yeah. Now, what is an object? An object is an instance of a class. Yeah. So perfect. Thank you, Bhavik. Thank you. So perfectly right. So if you see here, why we are telling like uh, a class is designed to create objects or a class is a blueprint to create objects? Because whatever you see in the object, more or less all the objects will replicate the class. So if you see here, this S one is a small house, which is actually having same like how you have your class. So that's the reason the definition of a class is. a class is like a blueprint to create an object now what is this object this object is just one instance of this class one real instance of this class okay now so so any anyone has any doubts in this okay so for those who missed the previous classes like we'll uh, we'll uh, share the recordings uh, we are done with few classes so so we'll talk i mean uh, h2k team will talk to those uh, who missed the classes we'll try to uh, figure out a way so that you can cope up from now okay now uh, okay so now let's go ahead uh, with with this again so now anyone has any doubts in the definition of this class now class and object so okay okay so now i am seeing uh, i am seeing a question from sanjay saying like so can we tell object holds dt means what is, what do you mean by dt uh, sanjay okay right right so now see here so a class an object is value type or reference type for example if you see here i am creating an object student s1 student s1 is equal to new student and student s2 is equal to new student so i have created two objects for this class student okay so now i am assigning this value s1 dot student name equal to raj and s2 dot student name equal to meghnath so this object this object will will hold will hold the data so this object s1 will hold the data and this object s2 will hold this data meghnath okay so now any questions here so this object will actually hold this data whatever we are assigning to this okay so sanjay is is that answered your question okay so can you uh, can you type your question again like okay okay so the question is the question from sanjay is what is the data type of s1 okay so s1 is of type student student is a new type it is not it is not see here so we have we have first one we have something called value types so so what are the two types of uh, data types which we discussed so we have discussed about value types uh, value types data types are int float double decimal like this we discussed 
and we have reference type reference types are something like uh, string uh, string or class all these are reference types now if someone asks you what is a data type for int uh, int age if someone asks you what is a data type for this age the data type is integer the data type for this age is integer now if someone asks you what is the data type for string name anyway it's very clear that the data type for this name is string now if I'm creating student student s1 is equal to new student so in that case in that case you need to tell that the type of the student is the type of this object s1 is student student itself is a new type which is called class student so so s1 can hold the data only only those variables which are present in your class okay I repeat again let's try to create a new project and we'll try to understand better so so this this is the key for object oriented programming so I'll exp I'll give some lot of examples to discuss on this so file new project I'm going to give I'm going to create another console application and here so I'm going to create a new class so I'm going to create a new class class uh, let me create uh, let me create student for example let me create student okay and here I have a method I have I have variables called public public string public string name and another one another one public string name and another one called public string course which course he joined now I have a method now public string print name and what I'll do inside this inside this I'll print the name of the student so I'll write console dot write line uh, write line I'll print the name okay so this method will print the name now I'll create another method called public uh, so this I'll put here void why do we put like if this method is not returning anything so as of now this method print name is not returning anything so I, I made this as void so let me add another variable public void print print course okay so now now let me write here console dot write line I'm going to write here uh, write here course okay so now how many variables I have in this class student I have two variables one is name and course and how many methods I have in this in this class student I have two methods print name and print course so I have two methods now what I will do is I'll create an object for this student so now I'll create an object student yes one is equal to new student now what I need to do I need to do s1 dot s1 dot name is equal to Meghnath so Meghnath is a new student who joined the course who joined the course called ASP.NET okay so now if I want to now if I call this method print name it will actually print it will actually print the name which I am assigning here if I call this print course this will actually print uh, the course which I am assigning here so all I need to do is s1 dot so so I need to do s1 dot print name and and I need to do s1 dot print print course so now if I do console dot read line okay so now if I execute this you can see clearly that you can see here Meghnath and ASP.NET is there so I have here Meghnath which is printed because print name is printing Meghnath and print course is actually printing the course so now now if someone asks you what is the data I can so I cannot simply put here yes one is equal to Meghnath so I cannot put like this because s1 is is not a string s1 is not a string even I cannot put like this s1 is equal to 20 or something so you can only assign or you can only use the way this object is designed for so this is an object and using object you will try to access the variables and methods so that is the only use of objects so so this object is used to access these variables and this object is used to access these functions okay is it making sense for all of you so now Sandhya is it clear okay so how about others okay 
So how many of you are not clear? Please feel free to ask. So we'll continue. We'll completely discuss this concept in the class in today's class because this forms a basis for you for 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 the remaining part of the course. So why we should say object will be of class type? Okay. So this object S1 is of type student. This object S1 is of type student. Okay. So now this object name, this object name is of type string. Similarly, this, so every variable, this variable is of type string. This variable is of type, is of type student. So one question from Bavik. So if you don't call print name, uh, so if you don't call print name, still it will print Meghna. So no, if you don't call, if you don't call print name, and if you want to print my name, so in that case you can write here console dot write uh, write line. You can write s one dot name. Okay. So normally, um, okay. So let me tell this way. So this class student is having two variables. One is name and course. And this is having two methods, print name and print course. So now the purpose of creating classes, you want to make this complete student functionality to be to be enclosed in the class. That we call it as data hiding or data abstraction. We have some theory concepts which we'll see in some time. But before that, this class is fully meant for student. So, so if I want to print name of a student, I need to call print name. I don't want to write the logic here like s1.name. Okay. So I want to reuse these methods for my functionality. And I want to assign this using. So now I am seeing one more question. So can we declare a string name instead of public string name? Okay. Now question here. Instead of public string name, can we declare a string name? Okay. Good question. So, so when I declare the string name, by default, by default, if I don't specify any data type, any data type inside a class, that will become private variable. So, a private variable can be accessed only within the class. I repeat again, a private variable string name can be accessed only within the class. So, if I want to access this value, I cannot assign here. I'm trying to assign, I'm trying to assign s1.name outside the class because my class is only here. I'm trying to assign this value outside the class. So which I cannot do it if, if this is of type private. So by default, if you don't mention like private string or public string or anything that is private. I repeat again, by default, a variable in a class is private. Just a second, just a second. Okay, so now by default, if you don't assign anything, like if you don't put public, private, or anything, any access modifier, by default, the data type or the variable, the variable in a class is private. And a private variable can be accessed only within the class. If you see here, I am trying to access this name inside this class method called print name, which is which is actually present in the same class. But when I try to assign the value name, value for name outside this class, somewhere in this class program, it is throwing error. So what is that here I am getting? Uh, name, student name is inaccessible due to its production level. So, so when I make this string, when I make this variable as a private, so we cannot access outside the class. For that reason, I made it as public. When I make this as public, that means you can access this value anywhere. Normally, normally in C sharp or any other, any programming, object oriented programming language, variables will be private. Normally, we'll make uh, class variables as private and class methods as public. Class variables as private and class methods as public. So what they will do is, now you can ask me a question. 
then if we make this as private, how we can read the values? So I repeat again. Um, I repeat again. So normally the class variables will be private and class methods will be public. So now can someone tell me if I make this private, can I access? So now if I make this as private and I'm making this also as private. Now, now I cannot assign these values here. So now I can no more print name and print. If I do print name and print, if I cannot assign this here, so then what is the use of print name and print course? What is s1.name? I don't have anything. s1.name, s1.course. I cannot access here. So if I do s1.name, uh, I'm not seeing at all. See here, when I put dot, am I seeing that name here? I'm not seeing that name. I'm seeing only print name, print course, and anyway, these four you know already. This four which is there for objects. So I'm only seeing print course and print name. But the moment I make this as public, so let me make this uh, name as public. The moment I make this as public, and when I put dot here, so let me put dot here, I can see that the name is coming here. See now, I'm seeing this name here because, because I made this as public, but I'm not seeing course here because course is private. So from this, what we can learn, the, le learn is, by default, if you don't mention any anything for a class variable that is private. And the second point, if you mention the variable as public, you can access it outside the class. If you mention that as private, you can only access, access it inside the class. Now, and in object-oriented programming concept, it is best practice to write all the class variables as private. So, so now if I make this as private, so I got a question now. Let's see what is the question. So can we call object like keyword like where as keyword? Okay, so we'll see that in, in some time. So by the end of the class, I will answer the question. Now, question to all of you. If I, if I, have, if I make this as private, then how can I assign, uh, assign the values here? Anyone knows it? Yeah, yeah, Sima, you're right. So we need to assign using methods. So we need to assign using methods. So what I'll do is I'll write here, I'll write one more method. So public uh, void read read data, read student details. Okay, now what I'll do here inside this, I'll write here uh, console.write line, console.write line enter student name and here I'll write I'll write here name is equal to name is equal to console dot console dot read line okay and I'll write here console dot write line enter student course and here I'll write here course is equal to console.readline. Okay, now, now if someone asks you where you are trying to assign this name, is it inside the class or outside the class? Inside the student class or outside the student class? It is inside the student class. So, as I said before, a private variable, where you can access a private variable? You can access a private variable only within the class. You cannot access outside the class. Now, now I cannot put here. I cannot put here s1 dot name. S1 dot name. I cannot write here like this. S1 dot name uh, is equal to make that. I cannot do it anymore. The reason I made this. I made this name as private variable. The moment I make this as private, I cannot access this outside the class. So in order to assign make here, in order to read the value make here, the only way which I have is. I need to access, I need to call the method. What is that method? S1 dot read student details. Now, now I can access this. See now, when I, when I run this now, this read method, read student details method is a public method. See here, it's a public method. So this method will in turn call enter student name, enter student course. So now let me run this. So I'm entering student name as Meghnath and I'm entering student course as ASP.
H2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis – How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.